In an age where almost everyone has a camera in their back pocket and an Instagram on their phone, we're all photographers. But we're also all photo editors. With a variety of filters and editing options at our disposal, it's possible to make photos crisp, clean, and modern. But there's also a flip side. We can also make them look vintage. Some credit this new trend to Kim Kardashian, who started posting darker, blurrier, grainier Instagram posts in January of 2017. When most people try to make photos look old, it comes down to three things. Deep shadows, saturated color, and one thing that I've always viewed as something bad in my photography, extra grain. I love grain. Not everyone does, but I think that grain is really the way we see the world. That's Kina Wicks, a professional wedding photographer who shoots with both digital and film cameras. We don't see the world in HD. Um, we don't see the people we love in HD. I think when you love someone well, you stop noticing their flaws. The grain takes away just a little bit of the imperfections. It really presents that full picture like you're seeing the people in the people you love. But how do you get that grain? Different types of film will give a photographer different effects with grain. The number listed on the film is the film speed, which shows its sensitivity to light. Something with a low number, like 115, will produce more grain than something with a high number, like 800. The type of film can also change the image's tone. A lot of times film will have a very specific color palette depending on what film you're shooting. Kodak is more warm, Fuji. I shot this photo on Fuji Superior 1600, and it's um, like a very cool film. In this way, different types of film are almost like different filters on Instagram. Which just goes to show how photography has evolved into the public sphere. But that's not necessarily a good thing. The way we use photos have changed. Instagram is something that's really to blame for this. That's Colin the man behind the tech-based YouTube channel, This Does Not Compute. In some ways, it kind of trivializes the photography. You know, it, especially with the built-in filters, it kind of reinforces this notion of just take the picture now and worry about making it look good later. But it doesn't really ever let you get, I feel, into this mindset of, I'm going to get the most of my photography, like film does. One of the biggest critiques of modern photography is that there's just too much of it. Since we all have cameras on our phones, we can snap pictures of anything and everything without worrying if they're actually any good. With film, it's different. Every shot counts, and every shot costs money. Buying the rules of film themselves cost money. And then developing those rules of film cost money. And in between there, you still only got so many exposures per roll. So you can't really just, you know, go nuts and fill the memory card up you, because I've only had so many. There are more images in the world right now than I think there ever have been. And um, in superstition, there is a saying that each time someone takes a picture of you, they take a part of your soul. Whether you believe that or not, it's undeniable that film forces people to pay more attention to their photos. It's something that we've all come to admire and try to duplicate in our own photography, whether or not we really know what we're doing when we mock the look of film. Just look at the kind of images that use that dark and grainy filter. On Instagram, it shows up a lot with portraits, candid shots, travel pictures. In other words, the grain and the darkness seem to work for things that are supposed to look unedited and real. It takes away the perfection too, and love isn't perfect, and life isn't perfect, and humans aren't perfect, and I love that.